This was me when I was 10 years old. And this is me today. Three months into my transition of being trans masculine, I realized that men started treating me differently. I remember in a Halloween party in 2017 that strangers, particularly men, started calling me bro, patting me on the back, and acted as if we were best friends even though we didn't know each other. It made me think, what is masculinity and what does it mean to me? Back when survival was the primary focus of being a human, everyone in a community had their certain roles. For example, men were the protectors and supporters of society, and women were the home takers and caregivers. Historically, since women were the ones to bear children, the mother and the child needed to be protected, and this is where being a man comes in. The idea of being tough and manly came from a place of protecting those in society who needed the support, so for example, someone who is pregnant. Men would go out and hunt for food and essentially do the things that someone who was pregnant wouldn't be able to do. Because of this, women naturally fell into the role of taking care of the kids and tending to work around the house. 60s advertisements were all about being a man. There was a clear line between men's clothing and women's clothing and images of men in advertisements were all about being aggressive, independent, and tough. These ideals were strengthened over the years leading up to the 2000s. In the early 2000s, just about 20 years ago, traditional masculinity continued to keep its roots even though it wasn't really relevant to do so anymore. This resulted in the idea of hypermasculinity, the overcompensation of masculinity to make sure that everyone knew that you were a man. Some of these attributes included being strong and tough, not showing emotions, and essentially pushing anything away that wasn't traditionally manly. Unfortunately, different behaviors came out of this. For example, misogyny, so prejudice towards women, and homophobia, hate towards people who aren't straight. Examples include homophobic tweets, mansplaining, the entitlement that men are smarter than women, the glass ceiling, an unofficial but very true barrier in an advancement to a profession, specifically towards women and minorities, and men dominating most spaces, for example, sports, tech, and business. Research has shown that these ideologies result in men, especially when they get older, to have a really difficult time with their mental health. In our lifetime, we'll all experience loss, grief, and turbulent chapters. By telling men that they need to avoid weakness, act tough, show no emotion, and stay strong, we're essentially telling them that they need to ignore the parts that make them a human. And that can result in difficult emotions being held in, avoiding going to the doctors, mental illness, the list goes on. The way that Western society has framed masculinity is not only hurting oppressed genders and marginalized people who are suffering at the hands of the patriarchy, but also men who are perpetuating this cycle of hurt. This is why things need to change. In a nutshell, taking ideas from the past and using them now doesn't work. It hurts everyone involved because men can't be humans with emotions and women and marginalized people suffer from this hurtful behavior. But now, things do seem to be changing. In the past few years, when I saw Harry Styles wear a dress, Lil Nas X sing openly about being gay, Shella Man's transition being viral on the internet, and TikTok dances being popularized by so many men, I knew that something was different. By all means, there have always been celebrities, artists, dancers who have been pushing gender stereotypes. See Prince, Billy Porter, Jaden Smith. This often happens to be folks who are black, indigenous, or people of color. Because of the systems we live in, cultural change usually ends up being pushed by the most privileged, the cisgender white men. People have been, you know, exploring gender and gender roles and the gender binary forever. It's unfortunate that it's, you know, not the people who we should credit that to, but we see people like Harry Styles and Billy Porter who are well-known big names. And to see that, that representation of like, look, here's this guy wearing a dress and that's all it is. And then we see the backlash behind it, this fear now that we're losing something um, when like all it is is literally just people gaining so much, so much, whether it's representation or freedom or self-expression or identity. The biggest changes I've seen in the past few years have been around the idea of intersectional feminism and representation in the media. With platforms like TikTok and Instagram, there have been so many different creators from different backgrounds who can actually make content and increase that diversity online. This includes creators from the 2SLGBTQ plus community, BIPOC folks, folks with disabilities, oppressed genders, and more. This results in a cultural change. Celebrity culture and trends end up influencing mass audiences, and mass audiences end up changing the way that they think and behave based on what they believe is acceptable. So representation from creatives and celebrities is key when it comes to changing the way that we look at masculinity. 
what I've seen is conversation. And I think sometimes we undermine the power of conversation. Like when we're having conversation, that means that we are having representation. When we start talking about that at a young age, and people are able to have the representation of what masculinity is, we are able to um, have a better understanding to be ourselves. Because I was a girl, I got to firsthand experience what it was like to be a woman in this society. And masculinity scared me. As we know, masculinity is associated with homophobia, misogyny, toxic masculinity, hypermasculinity, and I didn't want to be a part of that. But masculinity, at its core, isn't wrong. There's nothing wrong with it. But it's the way that society has interpreted it. It's the way that society has defined it. And as there are you know, different celebrities talking about things, different representation, different creatives talking about it and there are different platforms, we have this really cool opportunity to redefine what masculinity means for all of us. In the past year, I've been able to explore masculinity in different ways, healthier ways, instead of suppressing it. This has mainly shown itself in the ways that I have healthier relationships with the men in my life. Because I grew up as a woman and I predominantly have friends who are women, I've had a really hard time having an emotional bond with other other men. This is mainly from the place of hypermasculinity and not being able to get over the hurdle of being afraid of it. It's also hard to connect with men who do believe in traditional masculinity. But I will say, as time has passed and culture is slowly changing, I find myself having healthier relationships with men who are against toxic masculinity. I'm also a lot more open in the ways I present myself. Because I'm transmasculine, I personally have male privilege. And only now, after almost five years of being on testosterone, have I been able to start healing from my trauma around hypermasculinity. I'm starting to accept and understand that just because I express myself in a certain way doesn't mean that I am hypermasculine and it doesn't mean that I support homophobia or misogyny. By all means, we have a very long way to go. Homophobia, transphobia, misogyny, and the stigma around mental health still exist, but I think we're moving in the right direction. We've learned that the traditional roots of masculinity can be toxic. It stops men from being what they are, humans with emotions, feelings, and wants to express themselves. It's okay to like sports, cars, and fishing, but it's also okay to want to dance, wear skirts, and express yourself. Anyone of any gender can do all of these things. Essentially, what we're trying to do is leave the harmful parts of traditional masculinity in the past so that people can be themselves. With this conversation, I hope we can move towards a version of masculinity that celebrates all expressions, feelings, and mental health. This will not only be beneficial for men, but for oppressed genders and marginalized people. However you want to be yourself is valid and true. Your gender is not tied to who you should be. And I encourage you to be open and aware of everything that masculinity can be.